What's up guys? Welcome back to Diesel Creek. If this is your first time joining us, my name's Matt. This is my diesel powered, formerly diesel powered, Ramax hydraulic trench compactor. Now if you don't recognize this unit, it's probably because you haven't seen it in quite a long time. If you've been around the channel a while, maybe you remember it. It was exactly a year ago to the day that I got this thing off the job site I was working on. They just gave it to me because it was sitting next to a trash dumpster. Nobody knew what was wrong with it. It's really old, yada yada. So they said, take it. I threw it on the trailer. I brought it home here. If you haven't seen the first video on this thing, the link's down below in the description. You're going to want to check that out so you can uh, get the backstory on this thing. But anyway, long story short, the engine in it, no good. Ferryman diesel powered. Apparently they're big in Germany and other countries, but around here, not very common. I did manage to locate parts for it, um, but they were over $1,000 for a piston, ring, rod, and uh, rod bearing. So that's a little bit too much money to be sinking into something you got for free and don't know if it works anyways. Not to mention, there could have been other issues with the engine anyhow. I didn't completely tear it down and go through it. I'm not familiar with the engine. You know, you could be getting in pretty deep in doing that. So this thing's just been chilling outside underneath my pine tree waiting for me to find an engine for it. Now a few have come along and I was finally able to pick one up the other day that I think is going to work for us. So this yellow guy here underneath that precariously stacked pile of parts is the original Ferryman diesel that came out of this unit. As you can see I've got it all torn apart there. And she no bueno. Now a subscriber reached out to me about six months ago and said, hey, I've got one that'll fit on there for sale. I haven't run it in about 10 years, but it ran then. I said, okay. So I went up and grabbed it, brought it home with the intentions of slapping it on there. Upon further inspection, I found that it had a bad rod bearing as well, although this one was still together and functioning. I'm sure I could have gotten this one to fire up, but didn't want to take the risk at blowing it up. Now I'm sure the fellow that sold it to me didn't know that it had a bearing going out of it. It's not like it was something he had used. He had just picked it up somewhere and set it in his garage. So, not a big deal. But, I'm still without an engine. Flash forward a couple weeks ago, and BAM! Military Surplus Ferryman Diesel shows up on Facebook Marketplace. Now this guy fits the bill. Best I can tell, it's pretty much identical. Uh, we have a electronic fuel either throttle or shut off I'm not sure which one that is like I said I'm not familiar with these engines so just kind of winging it figuring it out as I go but everything else seems to be there the engine spins over very nicely I can't I can't feel or hear any slop in it or any bearing noise it seems like it's ready to go the oil ugh, the oil is perfectly clean looks like they just changed it I'm not super familiar with military surplus, but this 440 number, the only thing I could figure that that corresponds to is maybe the hours on the engine because it is super clean, seems like it's pretty tight, you know, I, I have no way to know that, but I'm just, just guessing and, and hoping that 440 hours are what's on this engine. So now that this thing's back in the garage here, the pine tree has left its mark all over it, so I guess the first thing I ought to do is get all the pieces parts from off of the top of it and uh, probably suck all the pine needles out of it with the vacuum cleaner and then we can really start getting into this thing and hopefully we'll be able to get that bad boy mounted and running all right we can actually see a little bit of what's going on now here um, you know, it's been so long, everybody asks how I remember where things go back together and how they go back together or whatnot. It, it takes some time sometimes, I mean, <laughs> uh, especially because this one wasn't like one I worked on for a while. This one literally happened in like an hour. I just threw all the pieces in a box and that was it. So, got some bolts laying there, not sure what they go to. I see we've got a couple nuts and bolts laying down here, not sure what they go to. <laughs> And I know I have a whole box of parts there that go to this thing. So, yeah. Now let the puzzle begin. Let's get all these pesky needles out of our way. Thank you. 
Much like a fine wine, some projects need extra time to sit and ferment and become the delicious and fantastic projects that they could possibly be. But when you get birds building nests in them, it's a sure sign that you should probably, maybe, work on this thing. Okay, taking a look at everything here, trying to see what kind of differences I can see. Our oil filler port is different, but it looks as though we could swap this one to this one because this one is going to be in the way of the fuel tank, which looks like it should bolt right up. Some sort of little button here. Not sure what that is, but this plate uh, holds on the electronic fuel shutoff solenoid, or maybe that's a throttle control, I'm not sure. The new engine has a lift pump on here, which uh, I don't see any harm in having. It doesn't seem like it would be in the way in our application. Uh, the factory engine has a block off plate where the lift pump is. So we could block it off if necessary. We have the proper plate to do so. The oil filter housing on this replacement engine has wires going to it. I'm not sure what that might be. Starters look a bit different. We're gonna attempt to reuse the starter that's on the replacement engine and see where that gets us. The front cover from the original engine has to be able to bolt up to this engine because it is the mounting plate for the hydraulic pump, so that's pretty important. Uh, it looks like the bolt holes should all line up though, so hopefully we're good in that regard. Also, I noticed the intake on our replacement engine is different than the intake on the factory engine. In fact, they are very different, like 180 degrees opposite. This one exits that side and comes up here on a bit of an angle. This one comes up squarely. Looks like it has two glow plugs in there. And uh, yeah, so might have to do some interesting modification to get an intake onto this thing. Look at that. Looks to me like the bolt holes all line up. That's one. A whole bunch more to go. Next, we gotta transfer this drive hub over. comes the fun part I guess. I need to pick this thing up and set it on there without dropping a nut. Ugh. My lord she's heavy. Ugh. I am the equipment. I know I'm going to get 12,000 comments saying, you should quit doing that because you're going to regret it when you're older. I regret it now. So I remember I wasn't a big fan of the way that this thing had to come apart. This flywheel cover actually has to mount to the pump first. And then there's a drive coupler that goes onto the pump inside the cover. And then you have to mount the cover onto the engine. So you're like sliding everything around. It's a real pain. I imagine from the factory, it wasn't such a big deal because all the hoses weren't connected to the pump. But, you know, I don't want to take all those hoses off of there and have to deal with the big mess. And it's just more disassembling. I am popular today, Jimmy Christmas. 
That's something else I want to mention real quick, and I've been meaning to mention for a while. If you message me, Jesus, see, on Instagram or Facebook or email me, and I don't get back to you, I am so sorry, okay? I, I really do try to read all the comments and read all the questions, and this, see, all day, I am blowing up. I've always got 10,000 people trying to talk to me, and I appreciate all you guys that want to reach out and have a conversation, and I would love to if I had the time, but as you can hear, <laughs> it never stops. So if I answered everybody's questions, I'd never get any of this stuff done. Probably the worst thing for nuts and bolts is sitting outside, exposed to the elements, not even assembled or put together, just laying around. So all these bolts are kind of putting up a fight. So we'll squirt some crow on there and uh, yeah, try to run everything in here. These bolts, the way they're located, the way these bolts are located, it's really hard to get anything but an actual Allen key in here. So it's really nice that you can finger tighten them as much as possible before you need to get your allen key on it. I just remembered I have these type of allen keys though. They have that ball on the end and man that makes it nice. You can actually get in here. So you can be on a pretty heavy angle and they still drive so that that works in tight spots like this. Oh yeah. Love it when you find a way to cheat. We've got this drive coupler to put on here. Oil that up in case we have to take it back off for whatever reason. With the keyway. Tell you what this little thing gets stuff pretty tight it's impressive so looking at the oil filter housing that's on our replacement engine here you see you got this big thick base here that adds some uh that adds some distance between the block and the filter here not to mention you've got these uh lines coming off here that they just have looped together and i imagine we could probably plug those off but this clearance here i think might become an issue We got a part for some other project here. It almost looks to me like this filter housing will just unbolt off of here because it's covering up these other bolts. I'm gonna pull this filter. Hopefully we don't make a big mess. Nice. Just unbolt this guy. We might actually be good. We might not have to change that whole plate. Look at that. Slap our filter right back on there. That was easy. Hey. Ooh, look at that. Slid right together. That little gap we have left should just be aligning our drive coupler. See, now the way this thing's made, you have no way to get in there and turn anything to align it. So you have to have the hand crank to get in here and spin the crankshaft this way. And since I don't, in the last video I explained, I took an old junk socket here that fit in there properly and made it so it engages the shaft and now I can spin the engine over. Oh, she's got some compression, I'll tell you that. There we go. 
We got it. Slap our nuts on there now, huh? Got a little ground wire down here we gotta connect, looks like. It's all coming back to me now. I I actually cheated some and watched the video where I disassembled this thing, but uh, as any of you know that ever made a video, not everything actually makes it in. I gotta cut a lot of stuff a lot of times just to try to save a little bit of time. Otherwise my videos would all be 10 hours long. Got the engine all bolted down right now uh, uh, with a couple bolts. I might have to take it back loose again because we have a few things to figure out here. First things first, we got to install our fuel tank and change out this oil fill neck as we discussed and obviously connect fuel lines and whatnot. Our intake is different and our exhaust port is different on this new engine. So we might have to do a little bit of uh, serious fabrication to get the exhaust coming out how we need it to. And I'm imagining this sucker is going to be pretty darn loud without any exhaust. So I guess what I want to do is put the fuel tank on and hook everything up and make sure the engine runs and that the whole unit functions before I sink that kind of time and effort into fabricating up an exhaust and intake for this thing. I do have a Donaldson type air filter that I think we could easily make work on this thing. Uh, but the canister type that was on the original engine may also be adaptable. We'll see. bolts I'm unaware of. What's happening? Okay, well I've tried 10 ways to Sunday. This bolt in this fuel tank, that you know, obviously there's like a sleeve welded up through the tank that this thing stabbed over top of, and it must be all rusted together down inside of that hole because I've got chisels and stuff pounding there. Here's wedges and stuff trying to pry it up off there. I tried unthreading the whole stud out of there. It's just not happening. I mean, I'm destroying the tank trying to get it off of there. So we're going to go ahead and try to procure this orange one off of here because it's freely moving. I just have to disconnect the fuel lines. I think we're good. That one actually has a filter on it too, which is kind of cool. Come on. I didn't think there was very much fuel left in there, but apparently there is. So I noticed our throttle control levers on the side of the engines here are a bit different. The replacement engine here doesn't have a hole drilled down here to accept a cable clamp for the throttle like the original engine does. So I think we could just unbolt this and take the assembly from the original engine. The original, the original engine also has like a spring-loaded deal on this thing, so it this one kind of returns to the shutdown position, but the other one's got a lot more tension on it. goes now oh boy okay that's not too bad look at that huh that's what I'm talking about okay 
All right, we got our fuel tank finally situated on there. Fuel lines all connected and everything. Um, not the end of the world, but as you can see, this fuel filter setup kind of restricts my options as far as an intake here. Um, yeah, I guess we'll burn that bridge when we come to it. Still got to get this thing fired up, make sure everything functionally tests oh, okay. Um, I really wish I could get that yellow tank off of there, but I'm just just destroying it. So I'm going to rethink this whole thing. And if everything checks out good here with the compactor, maybe I'll spend a lot more time trying to get that tank off in one piece. Other than that, I think we just have to connect our hot wire to the starter and our throttle cable, and we should be ready to try this thing out. So got our throttle cable all hooked up now, and I'm ready to connect the wire to the starter. And I just realized something. These two wires here probably go down to a rectifier that's right around the front of the engine here. Uh, but they had to connect to the stator underneath the flywheel, and this engine is not equipped with one. So, yeah, that sucks. If I really want this thing to ever charge the battery, I'm going to need to basically pull this entire thing back apart, pull the flywheel off, and take the flywheel off the original engine, pull the stator, bolt it in to the new engine, put it all back together. So, yeah, I wish I'd have noticed that sooner, because I would have done all that. One step forward and... Two steps back, right? Okay. I think we're ready to throw some fuel in this thing and a battery and see what happens. All right, I just filled the tank up with some fuel. We should be able to gravity bleed most of this system. So I'm going to crack this banjo bolt right up here at the injector. Yeah. Well, I think we just hit another snag in the road here. You guys see all that crud down inside the injector there? I just pulled the banjo bolt out to try and get some fuel flowing. And, yeah. She ain't gonna run like that. Diesel systems need to be extremely clean. That is far from it. Uh, I'm gonna probably pull the injector out of here, the whole assembly and see if I can swap it for the one, either one of the other ones that I have, you know, should be better than this. And I also see this fuel line here. It's got stuff in it, so I don't know if there's bad fuel in this thing the last time it ran or what, but it doesn't look good. That clear gasket. Fancy. Get. I'm gonna tear it. I'm gonna tear it. There we go. I didn't tear it. Yep, getting some nasty old fuel out of that thing, huh? Ugh. I'm gonna spray a bunch of carburetor cleaner down in here. There we go. All right, so we must have had a clog in the line from here to here. I blew that out and flushed it out with some carburetor cleaner. And now gravity has bled it all the way up to the banjo bolt here. And so we just really need to get fuel to the injector pump here. And then we'll bleed it down at the injector itself. And that should be it. All right, I got us a battery hooked up and everything. I got this fitting loose. 
and we should be able to start cranking it over now once we get fuel up to here close that off crack it down at the injector and this thing should just pop right off the ignition switch is messed up we're gonna have to cheat a little bit why what's going on all right, for whatever reason, I had to switch this starter out. The original one on the green engine just would not engage the flywheel. I don't, I don't understand that, but whatever. So we're gonna go ahead and crank it over until we get some fuel coming out of here. Maybe. fuel past our pump tighten that back down there we go we're getting fuel now oh boy I'm excited we're really close now I can assure you of two things when this thing pops off, or if it pops off. One is uh, it's gonna be super loud. We have no exhaust to speak of. It's just, I mean, I can stick my fingers into the exhaust port. So uh, yeah, there's that. And also the fact that I'm not 100% positive what all the controls do. <laughs> I can make sure it doesn't run anything over, but aside from that, it's all, it's all guesswork. Here goes nothing, guys. Moment of truth. Will this thing fire? Oh, it wants to go, I can tell. Yeah, gotta bleed this injector line some more. I think we still might have an air pocket in there. Oh. Yeah, that's contact, all right? Contact. Contact. I hate to just keep cranking. We're getting the starter. Not super warm yet, but it's getting there. Well, I really don't want to use ether, but I'm kind of running out of running out of options here. You know, it's such a small engine, it's really easy to ether lock it so I'm just gonna kind of spray it over the intake and you know see what it does
Controls figured out now. These ones are your uh, your drives. So left drum forward, right drum forward. You know, forward reverse. Uh, this is your vibration control. So. But I figured out this has two positions: forward and backward, and you have to put it into whichever one. You have to use this according to which direction you're going. So if you're planning on driving forward, you need to shove this forward at the same time. If you want to go backwards and vibrate, you have to pull it backwards. Uh, it spins the vibrator inside of the drum is probably the direction you're traveling. And uh, like if you leave it in forward and try to go backwards, it basically just wants to sit and spin. You're, you're fighting two different forces. And this guy over here is like a uh, turbo lever. If you're just traveling the machine and you want to go faster, and you hold that like that. When you push this guy, it wants to spin. This thing is awesome. It's really loud. We gotta fix that, but it's awesome. This little guy over here is like your turbo level. If you want to go faster, if you're just traveling the machine, you push this forward and then you push this lever and it takes off faster. Well, overall it functions. As far as I can tell, all the hydraulic functions do their thing just fine. But that thing wallops. I mean, when I kicked the vibration on out there, the whole ground was shaking. <laughs> it was, this thing's intense for as small as it is. I've run a ton of these things, especially newer ones, and they all hit pretty good. But I mean, this thing really feels like it's, it's doing the job there. So, yes, it functionally works, but we definitely have some issues to address here. All right. This thing has got fuel squirting everywhere. Part of that is on me. It was sloshing out of the tank. Uh, the other part is we actually have a leak down here somewhere. I can't tell which line it is. I think it's this return line going to tank. That's why I stuck the zip tie on here trying to pinch it off. But uh, we got fuel dripping down here somewhere. And it is just uh, just leaking all over the place. I don't know if you can tell down there. But the good news is, is that it functionally, it does everything it's supposed to. So that means we need to spend some time, fabricate up a proper intake for this thing and a proper exhaust. Because Lord almighty, is this thing loud. Whew. Well, anyways, guys, I think that about wraps up this video. We got our military surplus engine mounted on here. And after some obstacles, we got this thing running. The whole thing functions. I'm very happy with that. So in the next video on this thing, we're going to take care of the intake, the exhaust, we're gonna put it all back together. We got the, the hood and the you know the engine cover and everything to bolt back on there. And then uh, might even shoot this thing with a quick coat of paint just to keep it from looking so ugly. And then we'll take it out on a job and actually use it to pack something. Cause I'm telling you, this thing hits hard. So I'm pretty excited about it. If you guys like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so you can stick around and see all kind of other videos on this thing and all the other equipment I have coming. But as always guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Later.